More musical chairs this morning with cars. This time the pug has got to come out so the Corolla can go for a run. Let's give it a start after a while. A couple of pushes of the accelerator pedal. Not entirely unexpected. <laughs> and a belt chirps to life. It's the uh, aircon belt, and we're just seeing whether it will eventually not be a problem or whether it will continually chirp away for the first couple of minutes of the engine going. The mechanic just sort of said to see what it does. I'm out and about in Brisbane and this is the Walter Taylor Bridge at Indrapilly, which is the only habitable bridge in the Southern Hemisphere, I am told by the internet. It's uh, just under 90 years old, probably 86 this year, and uh, it has um, places to for people to live in at either end and a great big ballroom underneath, as I understand, on the riverbank. So uh, I'll be travelling along Oxley Road to head out to a fellow who lives in Durack, which is just beyond Oxley itself, and uh, be getting a part for the Corolla. I've brought the Corolla today. It is running a little weirdly. I don't know whether the um, fuel pump needs work or the fuel filter or just got some bad fuel, but I'll monitor that. Anyway, I am going to this fellow's house to buy a new cargo cover because I managed to wreck the one that the car came with, which was damaged already anyway, uh, with uh, picking up the um, dolly the other day for the Mighty Boy shell. So anyway, we'll go to the fellow's place, $40 for a new cover, hopefully it's good, and um, it'll be an adventure. So let's continue the journey. Right, across the bridge we go. Car has started. I don't know what these parking spots are for, possibly for people visiting or living in the bridge. And people did still live in this bridge until um, oh, a decade or so ago. The council would um, rent out the living spaces so across the bridge we go under the first arch which I think used to be the toll plaza and then under the second arch and you used to see washing hanging out on the balconies above as you drive under from the people living there. So you live on the top, but then underneath there are staircases and as I said, I think there's a ballroom underneath at one side. 
So an interesting little bridge that the people uh, demanded about 1930s and it was ready in 1936. So I'm back on a road I used to frequent 27 years ago, 28 years ago. And uh, it's much the same. It seems to be much the same. Goes along the railway line. As you come into Chelmer, there's lots of trees. Floods do affect this area. I've never been here in flooding, but I know that there are places in Oxley and in Chelmer that have had um, flooding problems. We used to live in the heart of Oxley, and I think a few metres from the house is where the water would have come up to in uh, recent years. I think every town has a bridge that is low and everyone seems to keep it in mind except for people in large vehicles. This is such a bridge. It's skinny and it's only 3.6 metres high and it's covered in detecting equipment to warn tall vehicles that they shouldn't go through. But you know what? They still do. And when they get stuck, it's one lane each way and causes all sorts of trouble. Coming down to the area of Oxley I used to live in, as we go down this hill, we'll go past the service station. Now that service station was flooded when the floods happened. So it reaches into this neck of the woods pretty well. And it is quite flat down here, so it's no surprise. So right here, certain points, you'd be driving through water. Houses on the left have been hoisted up 12 feet, it looks. And just down there is where I used to live. Golf driving range is well and truly shut. I'd say it's been flooded one too many times. And this open flat area is obviously a floodplain. Nothing's built here except for a roundabout. Right, nearly at the fellow's house. Going down Blunder Road. I don't know why it's called Blunder Road. I hope it doesn't have anything to do with a blunder. But it's quite a major road in this area. Right, well, I've picked up the parcel shelf from the fellow who used to own two of these, or his son and him uh, used to own one. So he had a bit of history with them. So knew what they were all about and even double checked to make sure he didn't have any rear tail lights for the left because I didn't like the look of uh, a couple of cracks in the one on this car. But he didn't have it. <coughs> so I'm just going to... Um, I'm back on Blunder Road and I'm just going to have a little sneaky peek at the house that my wife and I built 27 years ago. We put a lot of thought into it because it was on a corner block opposite some parkland so we sort of placed it so the outdoor area looked over the parkland across the road and also it had the master bedroom at the back of the house which was kind of the side of the house, being a corner block. But anyway, not by the front door, as so many house plans seem to do. The streets don't look that different. Some people are putting up fences, which wasn't allowed when the estate was being sold. There was a covenant, which meant that you weren't allowed to put up front fences. You had to have open-looking estate with just grass and houses.
But now, of course, it's uh, all bets are off. The land is all sold. The covenant, I presume, just falls by the wayside once there's no one here selling land. Forty zone. Fair enough. I used to screen through here at 50 around this light pole. Okay, we're coming up to our old place. It's got a big it's got a big fence and a retaining wall which weren't there when we were there, it just had a fence. It didn't have a retaining wall to hold everything up. So the uh, back backyard sloped down and away. We had to cut the end of the uh, we had to cut the end of the roof off the house because the council said it was going to be too close to the road, which is ridiculous. But we cut it off anyway. The builder was happy to do that, so they just had to figure out a different way to get the rainwater disappearing and that was nothing like that when we moved in nothing at all you can't even access the front door on the place now it's all fenced off so the first night that we were here there was only two houses in this whole estate ours on the left and the other one was down to the right here. That was a spooky night. We had McDonald's on the floor because we didn't have our um, furniture yet. And you looked out the window and everything was dark and deserted except for one house. Now I'll just turn around and show you a pathway that goes through to another part of the estate that is shut off to avoid traffic. So that pathway there, when I owned my first Nikki one morning, there weren't many houses built. The pathway was there though. I snuck down that pathway on my little Nikki because it was so skinny, it was able to sneak down without any troubles and then I was able to make it through to the other part of the estate and cut a few minutes off my trip. I was going through at uh, four in the morning so probably earlier than four, probably 3.30 so uh, there was no one around to stop me. But that's what we bought it for, that beautiful parkland across, so it's got a creek in there actually. So, yes, I don't mind what they've done with the place. It just, just looks very different. Very, very different. Right. Well, good to see you home. 